It's well past time for maintenance on the AX10. The rear servo has died on me again, so I need to replace it. And while I'm doing that, I'm gonna fix a few other things wrong with this. Team Baxter. Number one, as I said, my rear servo has died again. I've been using high-tech waterproof servos, HS5646WP. I use these on several vehicles, uh, both dual steering and regular single steering. And the regular single steering varieties never die, and on the rear steering ones, only the rear steering servo dies. I think this may have something to do with the fact that I'm having them reversed with the high tech digital servo programmer. Uh, so for this time I'm going to try to put an unreversed a high tech waterproof servo on there and if I encounter any more problems I think it'll be time to start looking to uh, to find a different waterproof servo. This one is out of warranty so I'm out of luck. I don't think I'll be able to send it back and uh, I have another one so I'll be putting that on and seeing how it goes. In order to accommodate not reversing the rear servo, I've had to figure out how to program my DX3 to rear steer. So that that's pretty neat and I'm anxious to get that working. That requires me to install SR300. I enable mixing on my radio uh, for the auxiliary channel and that way I can go ahead and plug one servo into my auxiliary channel the other one into my regular steering channel and with the since my radio only has a two position switch I just flip the servo into the different steering mode with the auxiliary reverse switch uh, located on the screen but anyway I'm going to get that going also I'm going to lower the upper links to drop drop it a little bit I'm going to lower the battery tray which requires me to flip the transmission around I'm trying to get it a little bit lower and pull the weight a little bit lower so a little bit of maintenance turned into a big deal and I think it made a, a big difference in the performance of this truck. This is one of my favorite trucks and I, I loved it how it ran but there was a few things that I wanted to adjust like the battery tray which I dropped a good half inch and it looks a lot better. Um, the nose of the battery is much lower than it was before. It's almost even with the top of the chassis and um, I'm running a 3S in it now instead of a 2S and I've already given it a little test run after I did all these upgrades well modifications and it performs a lot better with the 3S in there it's got that little bit of punch to give it a wheel speed to get over certain obstacles uh, push it over uh, steep hills I, I really like the 3S and I, I think I'm going to run 3S in this from now on in order to get the battery to fit in the front I had to turn the transmission around so now it's facing rear the gear cover is facing rear the motor is facing the front what this does is give the clearance for the full size battery when I flip the transmission I, the drive shafts didn't line up correctly so what I had to do is end up flipping the axles so these axles have been reversed uh, 180 each one um, and what that does is line me up with the transmission a little better it actually gives it almost a better line if you will to the transmission so that helped a little bit I lowered the upper links which gives me a little bit less articulation but that's probably a better thing in order to keep it out of holes and obstacles. All this started because uh, I had a servo go out and I replaced the servo. The servos had also had to be flipped due to the fact that uh, my links were in the wrong place when I flipped the axles. So everything pretty much has been kinda flipped or reversed on this truck. It's, it's all, all backwards now. 
When I had the axles apart, I lubed them heavily with marine grease. And the rear axle had been stripped out from the factory when I got the ridge crest, so I went ahead and replaced that one, the axle housing. Um, just pulled all the parts out and reinserted them into the new axle housing. The probably the biggest thing I did with this ridge crest is the steering. I'm gonna go ahead and plug a battery in right now so that um, you can see what I'm talking about. I had a uh, four wheel steering in, in the beginning, but that was a static four wheel steering, always on. I used a Y connector out of the receiver box, out of the steering channel. But now I've changed it up so that I can turn it on and off at will from my DX3. This helps a lot because sometimes I just don't want the four wheel steering on. Um, and so now with the two position switch on my DX3, I can turn the four wheel steering on and off. So right now the four wheel steering is off. Turn the truck on. So the four wheel steering is off, and as you can see, only the front wheels move. But I flick the switch on the DX3, and there I get all four wheel steering. If I reverse the rear channel, the rear steering channel, which is the auxiliary channel in this case, I can also enable crab steering which is where the wheels turn the same direction which goes better for side to side uh, movement I probably won't use the crab steering so much but it's a nice feature to be able to adjust so there's my four wheel steering the f both, both methods of steering work with the on off switch and so that's probably the most significant change I've made to the AX10 so I'm pretty impressed with it. I've actually already driven it and uh, seen how it works. I'm just replacing and upgrading as things wear out and break. Uh, it's extremely heavy. I've got weight in all four tires and I'll keep it that way. This is my basher crawler kinda. So I take it out pretty often and, and it handles pretty much everything I'll put through it. So There's a few changes, upgrades, mods to the Axial AX10 Ridgecrest.